the trolley. So you go in. Uh huh. I back out. I'm just going to go down the bump. I'm stopped. Do you want me to come, come and get up. it? Come back. I've got a lead. <laughs> There's something you didn't take off. Really? Yeah. Ah, uh, that'll be the fuel impulse. You huh? impulse. Yeah. Where's your mm. sexy stick? Comes with a carry handle. It does. Mind your elbow. Um, elbow. Ready, I'll go. No, let me sit, hold it lower. Uh, walk it. Right, well it's on the bench. Some donut forgot to disconnect the uh, the fuel impulse pipe, but um, we managed. The first job was to drain the oil out of the rotary valve circuit. On reassembly, I replaced it with some brand new oil. It's the same two-stroke oil that you use in the fuel mix. This bit's a bit rubbish. Um, they've designed it all so that you can disconnect all of the electrical connections from the coils etc except for this one which you have to take out of that connector by releasing the little plastic tang in there and then you have to pull it back up through this piece of protective sheath and just going to pull this uh, bit of pink wire through so uh, as a draw wire so when I'm uh, putting it back together hopefully it'll make my life a bit easier Tangulation. Yes. And there it is. Disconnected like a face sucker. Must say I'm not too keen on the look of this. Looks like it could just be grease. But it's in a suspicious place. Right, uh, I think next I've got to undo some stuff on the top. Some of these bolts I've put extra sealant on, that's because they're holding on these extra brackets and bits and pieces. Where there's no bracket, the, uh, the flange part of the bolt is meant to seal down onto the top of the cylinder head, so I've been told. So with a bit of lithium grease, uh, that then creates a good enough seal. But where you've got these extra accessories, I was advised to um, to put this extra bit of sealant on and it seems to have done the job around the top here, I didn't have any leaks. Just made this little template up, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put all of the bolts back where I got them from and I've just put a little reminder on there just to put some sealant on these ones as well. Because who knows, will I remember next time? If I remember right, it was a little tip from Finbar again. Thank you, Finbar. And we know that all this stuff's going to get polished, including these, before it all goes back on. And oh, there it goes. It just pops right off. And there are the combustion chambers. So around here, it's all clean. And the day it was born, but on this side we've got a lot more of that lead. So yeah, I'll enjoy cleaning that up. I'd say that's pretty crusty. So yeah, we're going to get all that off and make it all shiny again. Did we have a leak there or not? I don't think so. The seals all look quite good still. Maybe it was just a bit of friction between the bits of aluminium. Who knows. So job for tonight. Let's do some head polishing. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn this engine block upside down and let all the water drain out of it before I loosen the uh, cylinders. 
here's a question. I sort of expected that thermostat to pull out of there. Possibly with that seal. Don't really want to go digging around, so if there is a method for this, uh, it would be nice to hear that uh, before I start levering things. So I'm going to leave that for now and concentrate on cleaning the head up. Also going to take um, the uh, temperature sender out just so that I can check what that's reading and put a little connector on there to make it easy to get on and off. So yeah, I'd like to boil both of these up, the thermostat, see what temperature that's opening at and uh, also put the um, temperature sender in some hot water as well. So for cleaning up, uh, I'm going to start gently, I'm going to soak it with a bit of WD-40 and stuff. Borrowed one of the kids' toothbrushes, I'll never know, I'll put it back to by tomorrow morning. And we got some scrubby things. Uh, scotch bike pads, I've been told, are not a bad idea. Um, I haven't got any of those. But So let's start gently uh, with a bit of soaking and a little bit of friction and see if we can get it off. Okay, that's the cylinder head cleaned up. Um, so the method that I used for cleaning it was uh, I softened the lead with some uh, WD-40. I used a charged toothbrush just to work it around, loosen it up. I just wiped it off with some tissue and some rag and anything more, more stubborn. I used this uh, quite well used washing up sponge and I just gave that a bit of a rub around in there as well. So it's come up pretty good. A few interesting things. Uh, Adrian noticed uh, on the picture on the internet that there's some interesting marks. Uh, they've cleaned off a little bit now. Um, but yeah, there's some marks in between here which sort of indicate that it might have been blowing past the O-ring. So, uh, yes, um, that remains to be seen whether that was the case. But there'll be new O-rings going in here because I've got the rebuild of kit, so hopefully uh, we won't see any more of that. So next stage is to take the pots off. Um, David, uh, David Gore, who built the aircraft originally, advised me that uh, the main thing I need to do is use the exhaust manifold to line up the, um, the pots on reassembly, because obviously these, these pots can twist slightly. So before they're bolted back down, I need to put the manifold on to make sure these faces are completely aligned. Uh, I've also seen in the manuals that they use um, a plate to align the top. Uh, David mentioned that that wasn't really required but I thought well if I t loosen it off and I lose the reference it's gone so I have made myself up a little bracket here um, with four holes in it which is uh, you know which take a reference off the pots as they are at the moment that's the gap in between them so um, yeah I'll just pop that back on to make sure that uh, those four holes still are in the same position but the main reference will be bolted on the manifold. Now the manifold, that's a bit of a pain. So it's the new manifold with the uh, with the threaded uh, ports for the um, EGTs to go into. Mine are the old EGTs, the original ones that were on the 532. Um, and they are absolutely stuck fast. I've tried uh, carb cleaner, I've tried WD-40, I've put the uh, manifolds like that and allowed it to sit there and try and soak through. Uh, I've had the blow lamp on there and as you can see it's got starting to get a bit ugly now with the grips and they're starting to twist and uh, well they're going to be damaged. So I've decided that I'm going to cut them off just down here somewhere. I'm going to order some new EGTs, a £20 a sender but they are the new screw-in ones so um, It'll uh, get rid of that problem. I've also bought some EGT connectors. So I'll put some connectors along here underneath the um, the engine so that um, whenever this manifold needs to come off again, I can just drop the uh, connectors off and then untwist these, drop them out. So yeah, that's been a bit of a pain. It's going to cost me a little bit, but should make things easier for the future. So that's piston number one cleaned up along with the head. We're going to have a go at piston 2 now. Just put some bits of cardboard in here, stop the slopping around. So you can see how that was built up. This top ring, after 50 hours, was uh, quite caked up and quite stuck. So yeah, definitely needed doing with this uh, 100LL. Uh, it's occurred to me tonight 
why are we running them on 100 ll when we could be using ul 91 um the, our main concern with mogas is that it could contra contain ethanol uh, but ul 91 doesn't so um i think the experiment will be to switch to that after the rebuild and then check what the build up will be after another 50 hours so um yeah seems so obvious what is why we're not doing it let's get this pot off so as you can see pretty crusty it's still moving but it started to creep out on top of the ring and there's some quite big built up areas just there so um yeah i think it was getting due okay so that's the pistons cleaned up the uh the ring grooves all cleaned out piston uh piston rings cleaned off so rather, other than just a bit of a wipe down that's ready to go back together i was going to have a look at the pots just make sure that there are no foreign bodies in any of these the bolt heads look nice and clean still so the antifreeze was doing the job of stopping anything from corroding as i say it's only 50 hours anyway um, so i'm going to clean these pots up a little bit more and um, then i can dig these o-rings out and i've got some new ones of these to go in at least i hope i have in my rebuild kit so i've taken the seals out cleaned up the surfaces i've got to get in there uh, i've got some bits for my uh, compressor turning up tomorrow so i can give these grooves a good blowout make sure there's no debris in there and then um, i can dig out the gasket set put the new ones in uh, take this off clean up that surface a bit there's a little bit of gasket residue on there and we can put the pots back on and torque those down so we're back on the reassembly route 